Hey, truth be told, I'm Captain Ron here for Tony Sweet. We're at the Portal to Ascension in Irvine, California. And a lady that I've been tracking down for years, I finally found her and I pushed her a little bit. And she fell right in this chair, so she's going to sit and talk to us a little bit. Barbara Lamb's been kind enough to talk to us a little bit. She's been researching um, mostly through regression. Yes. Uh, you know, this experience that people have with the others, the visitors, the... Extra not, the extraterrestrials, things like that. So let's 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 start off, Barbara. So you've been doing this for a long time. I, I I'd argue that you have as much knowledge of this as as anyone. And uh, how? What what do you think is uh, going on here? What I mean, do you do you have a, a sense of this yet? Yes, I do. Of course, it's not particularly fine tuned. But um, well, first of all, I've been doing this work of regressing people to their extraterrestrial experiences uh, since 1991. Wow. And that's been a lot of people. It's been probably almost 5,000 wow. regressions. Specifically uh, on this, in this area? Yeah, wow. to this, yes, and I've also done uh, many regressions to people's previous lifetimes, past life regression. But I think my specialty, really, my dearest love, in fact, is helping yeah. people to know the details of their extraterrestrial encounters. So through all this work, I've realized that there are many, many of these other beings. I mean, there's like 100 and 140 or something. That oh, at least, there more. could be more. And of course, you see, each person who's regressed describes the beings whom they're having an encounter with. And the descriptions may vary. In other words, there might be one type of being who's described a bit differently by each person who experiences that. Even though it's the same being. Yeah. So right, it, sure. We all so have it's, our own lens. It's very difficult to sure. uh, pin down the number of beings. But, oh yeah, I'm sure it's well over 100 different kinds of beings who presumably come from uh, different planets, different aspects of the now universe. That's, that's the first question. Do you think it's interplanetary like that, or do you think it's interdimensional? Both. Both? Yeah. That's the yeah. best answer yet, because yeah. I'm trying to decide which one it is, because yeah. it used to only be planetary for sure. Yeah. Now all I hear is interdimensional, and you're saying it could be both. Oh, yes. I think that there are beings who come from physical planets that support intelligent life, and there are other beings who come from different dimensions. and. Even the ones who come from physical planets, in some cases, I think, are interdimensional. In mm. other words, there are times when they are living as physical beings, and then other times when they seem to go into another dimension and don't have a physical body, but they're still very conscious beings. Here's a question for you. We just said there's at least 150, let's say. Oh, different exactly. varieties at yeah. least yeah. why do all of them why are they all so clandestine why doesn't somebody land on the white house lawn as everybody wants <laughs> well let's just take a look at the human population we human beings are very reactive and when we are aware of something that it seems to be coming somewhat mm -hmm. close to us or in our territory, uh, we tend to go into <gasps> caution and fear and protectiveness, <laughs> and we are very well armed. Yes. And um, I, there have been known uh, cases where a UFO has come, or even a fleet of UFOs, like over Los Angeles mm -hmm. a number of years ago, and people were out there with all of their killing machines yeah, the army of various types them. yeah yeah shooting them trying to bring them down without our even knowing what they were or uh where they came from or what their intentions were right. so they and these beings you see i think most of them are so knowing about us as humans they know so much more about us than we know about them I always like to tell yeah. people it's that jungle theory where we're walking through the jungle and we see an anthill and we might pluck a few of them. They're unaware that we're there. Mm -hmm. And we put a number on their back and put them back and study them and check them again later. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. They, they, 
They don't even know that we came. We don't stop and say, ask the queen, can we take a few of these people? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. I think so. They just, I think they just the do thing. it. Yeah. You see, I think among these many, many beings who come here, so many of them are really interested in planet Earth. Um, it's been said by an extraterrestrial who used to talk through one of my clients for years, in fact, for about 12 years. Um, he said that planet Earth has more species on it and subspecies and sub subspecies than all of the other planets put together. All that's the other planets. That's so incredible. I've heard that before, though. That's an interesting. Yeah. Uh huh. So we are so rich with life and diversity of life. And they're also very interested in human beings. Now, one of the theories about that is that one of their main interests in us is that they help to seed us. They help to create us way, way, way back in time in the first place. So that it could be that the whole human race is hybridized between whatever the original somewhat intelligent life right. form was and then the extraterrestrial. Uh, possibly Anunnaki in us, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So whether they were Anunnaki or some other groups, um, this is certainly a theory that holds a lot of water. I don't know that we can prove it, um, that we were hybridized. We were hybridized. We were well, what about created as human this beings. idea that now they're creating hybrids with us. I mean, you yes, know, Jacobs and those guys think that that's a big part of this. I know that yeah. Ray Hernandez doesn't think that's necessarily the biggest thing. Well, I think it's a very big part of yeah. it. And I think there are sort of two major groups of ET human hybrids. One of the groups, which I knew about before the other group, uh, was hybrids who are not human enough to live here. So they are... Because uh, it'd be noticed or because they can't even breathe our air or something? Well, both. They, oh, they okay. couldn't... Uh, their, their physiology isn't constructed so that they could really handle our viruses and bacteria and so forth, and our food and our way of life. Um, and also they would look too different. They would be ostracized. Yeah. They might be victimized because of that. So they tend to live on the ships with the ones who created them with the help of human eggs and human yeah. sperm. And um, so they live there on the ships and they assist in some of the things that the extraterrestrials are doing. And they get visited sometimes by their human parents. Now, I don't mean the mother and father together, but uh, the mother will be taken on occasion to visit the child. Even and they'll when they, recognize it as theirs. Yes, they often that do. Crazy. And they're always asked to relate to that child. Yeah. When, they're, when, the chil when those hybrid babies are infants, uh, they, they bring the mothers on board and they ask them to hold them and nurture them and love them, sometimes even to breastfeed them. And um, because they say that the human component of the hybrid really needs that human yeah, loving and touch. nurturing. The, the alien part, extraterrestrial part. Of, I don't like that word, Barbara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doesn't necessarily yeah. need that to the, the extent that we do. Now, the other type of hybrids are the ones that are living here and were actually born here of regular human mothers and fathers. But they're half alien, yeah. or half AT. Well, they're not half e E.T. Maybe but, a quarter or something. But they, they they, thinner they, out, huh? It's difficult to yeah. tell exactly what percentage. But they live among us. But what happens is that the human mother, either there are two major ways uh, that these hybrids come into being, the ones who live here on the earth, that uh, the mother will be taken and um, her eggs are taken. On a separate occasion, the father will be taken and his sperm will be taken, and that is saved and combined by the extraterrestrials, um, probably in a little petri dish type of mm -hmm. arrangement, uh, combined with their genetics. 
and in some cases their reproductive material. And then that, in other words, creates an embryo. And then on another occasion, the, the woman is taken again and that embryo is planted in her uterus. So of course, from that point on, she is pregnant and she will carry the baby full term and give birth the way that we humans give birth to our mm -hmm. babies. And that baby gets raised in that family and but grows are up they aware as of a this? human. No, usually the uh, mothers and fathers are not consciously aware. They might be aware that they are having ET encounters, but they're not necessarily, in fact, I think usually they're not aware that this particular process mm. is happening and they're not aware that this baby that is being carried in the womb is a hybridized baby. Uh, so anyway, another method, that's one of the main yeah. methods. Another method is that the human mother is already pregnant with a human baby from the human father. And during the pregnancy, usually about the fifth or sixth month, when it looks like this baby is really going to Amazing. survive, um, they, the mother will be taken and an ET mm -hmm. will inject a series, a uh, combination of genetics from not only one type of extraterrestrial, but usually maybe two, three, or four different types, um, like a regular syringe injection through the wall of the abdomen, through the wall of the womb, and into the fetus. And then that's how that particular fetus and they tell becomes her this. hybridized. And through regression, she tells you that this happened? They don't tell the mother, no, as well, this is happening. How would she ever know that there's all these different kinds mixed in? How would she know? Well, um, the, the reason that I have found out about this is that the babies who were born, these hybridized babies, um, who, by the way, always feel really, really different yeah. than regular babies, other kids, other children, other family members, and they always feel that their real family is way out there somewhere. And of course, their human parents don't like to hear that. Right. <laughs> Well, yes, I mean, you're wonderful mom and dad, but, but my real family, whom I really love, they are out there. I don't know where, but I know they're out there in space somewhere. See, it's interesting yeah. that that corroborates yeah. with people that say they've had this experience, and then the kids feel that way. So that's sort yes. of corroborating evidence. Yes, sort of. yes. So the kids are always feel different than everybody, even their own family, in the sense that they are much more psychic and they have healing abilities from their earliest ages. And they, they always look to the sky and try to figure out, why do I love that? Why do I feel that my home is out there? And they have telepathic abilities. And um, I mentioned healing abilities. Uh, seems like a it, good thing almost. Oh, oh yes, yeah. they're excellent abilities. Yeah. They're very, very psychically tuned in. Uh, they can do psychokinesis and move things See, with that's their good minds. For the and, children, but yeah. for the parents, this can often be very traumatic. Well, they wonder about those children. Also, some of these hybrids, the ones whom I know, ones who live here on Earth and look fully human, yeah. um, sometimes they have something different about their physiology. For instance, one woman, hybrid, whom I know, has a whole different <laughs> blood consistency. Really? And another woman has a different bone consistency. And another Perfect. one um, has different thumbs that really sort of flare out at the end around mm. the thumbnail. And another one has, a uh, young man, um, actually has one of the internal organs that the rest of us have in our lower abdomen, his is up in his chest. Interesting. Yeah. And, you think and there'd be something in the DNA that we could see this? Well, they, probably they can, but I don't know that these people have been tested. I mean, yeah. that would be an interesting thing. Oh, yeah, so I'm involved in I'd love in to that. get some proof for this. That's the problem. We're lacking this. Yeah, well, 
uh, <clears throat> right now um, I'm involved in a project of getting the hybrids who I wrote about with my co-author in the book called Meet the Hybrids. Right. So we're having them and then I've been meeting and regressing other people who have all the earmarks of being a hybrid and they have agreed to being tested genetically. So It'd be nice to get something like that, some hard evidence to kind of yeah. get this out there. Well, you see, one thing we really need to face is that there's not going to be any DNA testing lab that's going to admit that they have an alien body to compare DNA oh, with right. human DNA. Sure. So sure. the best that they could do, we think, is to find in DNA testing that these people have an unusual amount of unknown right. There's DNA. Right, an anomaly among them. Yes, right. but, but well, they that would be they, something. But they wouldn't, we think so far, want to admit that they have alien well, at least that's something. samples there, yeah. alien DNA to actually test it. Right. Now, as disclosure happens more and more, as I think it's beginning to do, um, maybe that won't be such a taboo subject after a while. I mean, really? we, we know from certain people that there are extraterrestrial bodies here on Earth and they have been dissected and they have been analyzed and studied, but, um, but no official is going to admit that. But we just yeah. said earlier there's 150 different kind. What if they don't, Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, that's true too. But, but to even get them to admit that this unusual bit of DNA or, or what they consider unknown DNA, uh, uh, that, that to consider that that is extraterrestrial, they are not going to admit that. But still, we think it's worthwhile going to see if yeah. at least they would have an unusual proportion right. of unknown or Right. unusual DNA so so that's in the works and it now. meets with their story it matches their story these yes. are it's not like just yes. people off the street are being no. claimed people that claim this has happened to them yes. then if they have an anomaly then there's something there yeah that's right so these people are convinced of it anyway uh, but the rest of us would like proof yeah. yeah so I know I'm, I'm yeah. fighting with people constantly because there's a lot of evidence but people want a little more evidence oh yes that's right and that's tough we humans like evidence and that's yeah. a good thing yeah. you know we, we don't want to disbelieve everything we sure. hear we, we want some proof as much as we can get I, it. I'm I'm all about the proof I just feel yeah. that these abductees or contactees or whatever you want to call it is a form of evidence. This is one of the areas that I'm pretty open to because I'm trying to be very skeptical about most things we talk about on this show. Uh -huh. And I feel like there is a strong argument for this happening to a lot of people. There's yes. so many people that have claimed it. Yes. Something's happening. Well, you see, I don't just hear people's claims. I do hear a lot of claims. But um, it, it's the regressing people that makes me feel convinced Absolutely, that well, these encounters. Well, certainly they're to lie that way, right? They yeah. wouldn't be able to lie to you necessarily under that. No, right? when they're in a deep state of yeah. hypnosis and, and material is coming from their mouths and they are surprised about the material that's coming, but they are convinced, whoa, this is true. This really happened. Um, yeah. You know, then it's very, very convincing. And usually after a regression, somebody will say, ah, oh, I never, I never suspected that that is what happened. Now you see, people typically have clues that something of this sort has happened because they will have markings on their body and they don't know how they could have had the markings. They'll have implants in their bodies They'll have missing time experiences. Yeah. And some uh, of them aren't really familiar with this culture either. That's right, and yes. They're, they're like, look, I don't know about this. Like most of the people who started coming to me in the 1990s, well, it, this whole subject wasn't very widely talked about. Sure. And so they would come saying, you know, some very strange things have happened to me. 
and I don't know what they are, but I would like to find out, and that's why they come for regressions. So we'll go back to one of the episodes uh, that have made them really wonder about this sort of thing. They're pretty and traumatic it, for a lot of them. Pardon? It's probably very traumatic for a lot of them to yes, face it this is. realization. Is that? Yes, it is. And yet, on the other hand, once they have found out and, and the material has come from themselves, it's not like a psychic telling them what happened to them. It comes up through their own mind and their own experience. And it fits in with the bodily clues. Yeah. Or things like the missing time episodes. They know they've missed a few minutes or half an hour or hour or two hours. And the experience that comes up in the regression fits that amount of time. Let me ask you this. Yeah. In, 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 in Ray's, you know, they did that um, massive survey for free. And they showed that most people, 80 some percent, feel that this experience was a good positive thing. Yes, yes. Do you find that same thing in your work? Yes, or you I do, do, I do. That, that, no. that, that's hard for me to grasp because yeah. I can't imagine that's a good thing. I don't yeah. want to wake up with a bug at the end of my... <laughs> well, most people whom I've worked with, and that's over 2,000 people now I've done these regressions with, yeah. um, most of them are frightened when they realize a being is there in the room yeah. or that their car motor is starting to peter out and they pull off the road and they see bright light and they see these unusual looking beings coming toward them. I freak out. Yeah. So that's very understandable that yeah. people would be really frightened. I would be too. And so, so many people will have these experiences start in early childhood and they'll wait for decades. They might be in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, before they come for a regression with anybody. And so all of that time, they've been really worried about this. Ah, oh, what was that? It must have been awful. Oh, I'm afraid to find out. But on the other hand, I want to find out. So eventually, they find me somehow, and, and they come, and they're very, um, unsure about what they're going to find and quite scared even yeah. and I certainly understand that it could be an, an uncle rape me or whatever who knows yeah right. yeah and um, and so they've built up all those decades of worrying about it as well but when they get into the regression and find out that okay these are very unusual beings but they're not harming me, and in many cases, they're even helping me, and they're showing caring about me. Um, it really takes on a new look, a new feeling, so that after the regression is over, and the person just coming out of it, and we always talk a little bit, yeah. debrief it afterwards, and the person will say, oh, I'm so relieved to know what happened. And it wasn't, it didn't turn out to be as scary and awful as really? I had thought all this time that it would be. In fact, I realized that these beings, as different as they are, really care about me and have expressed love to me and they've cared about me all of my life and they will continue to wow. care about me even though I never even knew that. So people tend to be relieved after they find out what's going on. Now a lot of people have heard about ETs. Um, poking and probing and taking yep. skin samples and even rectal probes. Yep. Now that sounds absolutely horrible, but 
when people are reliving in regression, reliving one of those examinations, I usually ask the person, would you like to know what they're doing? And the person being regressed says, yes, of I would like to know. Yes, of course we want to know. And so I say, well, you can ask them. You can even ask them in your mind. And they're very telepathic. They will understand what your question is. So they ask, like, what are you doing? What answer? And they usually they get an answer, and it's an immediate answer from one of the beings <coughs> saying, we are helping you. And then I will say, would you like to know how they are helping you? And they do want to know that, and they ask, and the being will say, we are examining to see which of your organs is functioning well and which might not be functioning well. Hmm. And by the way, you have a problem with your liver, which you apparently have not known about. And we suggest that you go to your doctor back on Earth and get him to check that. Or they will say, you have a problem with such and such an organ and we are healing it. Wow. So there are many, many cases in which a person is really healed we hear that. of something we hear that. pretty serious. They get something good about this and also that they feel like it's a pretty good experience. However, isn't it also true that this can be a very traumatic experience in their life? I hear of many people getting divorced, losing their job. This would be a life-changing event, to say the least. Yes, it is. Well, unfortunately, sometimes the spouses just don't feel comfortable at all that their spouse is having these experiences and, and doesn't want to have anything to do with it and just doesn't even want to be with the person anymore. That does happen. Or it could be that the one who experiences these encounters um, just gets tired of the spouse saying, I don't want to hear about this, or, oh, you're just making that up, or it's got to be your imagination. <laughs> and that happens frequently. Yeah. But fortunate are I the... I feel for these folks. I really do. Oh, I do, too. Fortunate are the couples where one person is experiencing this sort of thing. Usually the other one isn't. But fortunate are the ones where the other one, the non-experiencer, um, is maybe never totally believes it, but is patient and right. decent about it right. and honoring about it. So what yeah. do you think, um, you can look at this a long time, it seems like these stories are pretty much the same. Like what you told me now, that's what I know as an alien abduction or what people call it that. What's going on? What are they doing? Do you have any ideas? Well. It depends on the beings. You see, there's, as we know, there are so many different types of beings, and they all have their own agendas. Uh, some are here uh, to really help humanity through the people whom they are taking for these experiences and healing when necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of them are teaching these people, these abductees, experiencers, I prefer Contact to call these, them. Sure. Yeah, uh, they're, they're teaching these experiencers various skills which can help our fellow men. In other words, they teach them healing skills. Uh, they give them a more spiritual perspective, a more consciousness perspective. Uh, they can teach them um, skills like telepathy, uh, being able to read other people accurately without words. Why don't they do uh, this to some politicians and people that would, it would help change the whole world by just hitting a few? Well, I, I wish they would. I don't know what the answer to that question is, but uh, certainly some of our mm -hmm. prominent people could use some, yeah. some help along some that contact. line. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's one of the reasons. And I think some of the groups are just plain and simply curious about us. Like we would take another life form. We've done, we humans have done this millions of times, sure. taking any other kind of biological life form and testing it and seeing 
how it works and what its digestive system is and its heart system and do they you have think by now they'd or... know though you know it seems like these stories have been going on for a long time mm -hmm. and they're pretty much the same mm -hmm. you think they would know and I wouldn't want that to happen to me still so. you see there's so many different types that it could yeah. be that one shall we say species of extraterrestrials has learned all there is to learn about any of the life forms here on earth and um, but then another group comes along and they want to know for themselves or maybe sure. they don't even know the first group they're from a whole different yeah. solar system or uh, planet or galaxy even and so they want to know for themselves so part of it is sort of a scientific curiosity uh, part of it is uh, to upgrade humanity to really raise our consciousness and help us to live in more loving cooperative ways really some of the beings are very very strong on that and yet they look like extraterrestrial beings and it would be easy to you know really sure. worry about what they're here for and it turns out that they're here for very good purposes he seems yeah. so calm about this like it's not a big deal that people are coming here from across the galaxy or interdimensionally and taking us one at a time it's just what's happening well i'm calm about it because i've heard this so many times you see out of the 230 2030 people or i lose track here mm -hmm. and there um and some of them have been able to come for many regressions. If they lived close enough to me, they'd come for 10 or 12 years wow. worth of regression. So I've really done uh, a lot, at least 4,000 regressions yeah. and, and learned a lot, gotten a lot of perspective because these people are definitely not being encountered by all the same beings there's a whole variety of beings that come so that's basically and, what you yeah. walk away with that there's a variety coming and they seem to be helping healing just checking nothing too nefarious it seems well i don't see that any of them have come for really nefarious reasons it could seem like they are coming for nefarious reasons because they're frightening to us. They're really different. They're bizarre looking. So for, for instance, the mantis beings. Yeah, I don't want him, man. I do well, not want that. <laughs> the first person I regressed to, a mantis being, in fact, she was the second woman I ever regressed back in 1991 to extraterrestrial experiences. Uh, she went in her first regression, she went back to age four when there were some extraterrestrials outside her kitchen door. The kitchen door had a window in it. You know, she could look out and mm -hmm. see that they were the really surprisingly unusual looking beings. And she went outside. She was a curious, little, curious little kid. And she went outside and said, who are you and what are you doing? Thinking of Halloween, yeah. you know, but these were real beings who looked different. And one of them was a very, very tall being, tall black being, and had huge black eyes that wrapped around the side of his head. And he wanted her to go with him. And she said, well, you seem like a nice guy, but you're a big bug. You know. <laughs> she That's went great. with him anyway. But, um, and there was a little gray there and, and a couple of other types as well. But she went with the mantis being. Well, I kept doing regressions with her over a period of 10 years. And she went, she had many different types of beings that would come and take her. But the most frequent type was a big, tall, white mantis being who took her many times and he took her to some amazing experiences which were very enlightening and very positive hmm. so she built up a feeling toward this mantis being and it seemed to be the very same being for many of these experiences and she built up a real 
liking for him and then a respect and then a loving for him and eventually described him as an unconventional, I mean, unconditionally loving wow. being. Of course, as yeah. a child, I'm sure it's easier, like with anything, if you grow up with that when you're a little kid, you can grow right at that, that, you know, the crocodile hunter grew up playing with crocodiles and <laughs> didn't scare him, but it would freak me out, oh, me just too. like anything else. Yeah, so right. I'm sure that experience as part of doing it as a child would probably be better than if it first happened when I was, you know, 40. Yes, well, of course, it's a little kid, too. too. She was very frightened yeah. by these things. It was only, you know, as she grew, grew older and having more experiences with this mantis being that she learned that all of them, he and all of them, you know, were really kindly decent. They just looked like they wouldn't be kind yeah, of. Yeah, that and yeah. they're taking me. I mean, that's strike two. Uh -huh. I, I, I just can't get my head around this is a good, positive thing. I know 80% of the people that have this happen to them feel that way. I hope I stay out of that group, yeah. I'll be honest. Well, it really is tough for us, this idea of just being taken without Against our permission. Your will. Right. See, yeah, that's, without that's our permission. Sneaking up ugly on or us not, in I don't the middle of that. the night. Right. You know, I mean, these, these are really tough things for us to experience. <sighs> yeah. And that's why it's really helpful to do the regression. You can kind of, I mean, even those things are still happening. Uh, you can get past the, you know, the dread once you realize that, oh, you know, bad things aren't really happening in these experiences when yeah. I'm taken. Yeah. That's hard to swallow, though, but yes. Uh, so listen, everybody, <laughs> sleep well tonight, because if you do get woken up by a bug-looking thing at the end of the bed, he's going to be nice to you, and he's a loving being, right? Does that make you sleep better? Uh, Barbara, thank you for sharing this with us. I really appreciate it. Really, really is wonderful getting your insight and years of experience in this area. And I, my heart goes out to those people who have had a traumatic experience like this, because I know how hard it is. Yeah. That's and it. that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this work because I, I do really feel helps. for people yes. like that. And when they give me feedback, oh, I'm so relieved to know. Sometimes they've expected that whatever they're going to find out in regression is going to be so horrific that it will really ruin their lives. And then they find out in the regression that that experience turned out to be not horrific, odd, yes, odd and unusual from our point of view, sure. but not horrific, not destructive. In fact, I've regressed so many people who've really been healed of drastic conditions by these ETs, and yet still, as the healing was going on on board the ship, these beings were still, from our point of view, very unusual beings, but they were doing wonderful things with excellent technology to really help them and heal them. Imagine they must yeah. have been imagining something so horrible that getting taken by an alien being wasn't so bad. Yes, yes. yes. That's incredible. Yes. And, and that's, that's the least of it. Right to find out that it wasn't so bad. Right. And that's significant in it itself. Is. But to find out that, wow, it not only wasn't so bad, but it was helpful to me. I benefited from this. These beings All care that for nothing. about me. Yeah, these beings care about me. Yeah. If they come again, I will be startled. I will be surprised. I might be uncomfortable, but I won't be so terrified because I will know that probably the experience is going to be quite decent and maybe even helpful. It's amazing. It is. Really amazing. Yeah. So sleep well, everyone. Um, yeah. that's, that gives you some solace. Uh, for Tony Sweet, I am Captain Ron here uh, for Truth Be Told at the, what are we at, the Portal to Ascension Conference here in Irvine, California. Right. We'll see you next time.